Okay, so from the previous video, we have um, discussed example 13, where we are aware that when we are having the functions, uh, when we are having the functions, although we are having the same expression uh, in the function, okay, but if the domain given are different, so you can see that for all the example here, the domain given are different, right? Therefore, the range for this particular function might be also different. Okay, and then the method that we use uh, basically is by using graph method uh, where we try to sketch the basic graph of x squared plus 3 and then uh, according to the domain given, then from there, from the graph, we roughly know where is my range. Okay, what's the value for y for this particular domain? Okay, and now we are going to ex uh, maybe to discuss a few more examples in this video. Okay, so we'll straight away go to example 14 first. Okay, let's have a look for example 14 and this is the exam style question. Okay, um, we are having the function f and then it is defined by x squared minus 3x for x can be any real number. Lah. It's an element of real number. So part number two, they want us to express fx in this form. And I think it is quite obvious that this is a completing square form stating the values of A and B. Alright, so to complete the square for quadratic equation, so just try to recall back what is the step. Alright, so I try to copy out the original expression. <clears throat> and then to complete the square, I have to plus something square and then minus something square. Okay, so what is the something here? So the something here will be actually the um, b divided by 2. So negative 3 divided by 2, I should have negative 3 over 2. Lah. So I'm having negative 3 over 2 here and also negative 3 over 2 here. Okay, then for the first three terms, I will want to combine them, become a big bracket with a square outside. So I'm having a big bracket with a square outside. Then the term inside will be the x squared become the x. Negative 3 over 2, I will just write it as negative 3 over 2. And then minus 9 over 4. Okay, so this is actually the completing square form that we have for this particular quadratic expression. Okay, so we learned the technique of completing square from chapter 1, right? Then after that, they want us to write down the range of f. Okay, to write down the range of f, basically for what I do is usually I will try to imagine, okay, the shape of the graph. So I'm having x minus 3 over 2 square minus 9 over 4, which means that um, from this value here, it is a positive value A, which means that we are having a U-shaped graph. And from the completing square pattern, we actually know that the minimum point, okay, the minimum point for this particular curve will be 3 over 2 and also negative 9 over 4. So if I try to imagine the graph in my mind, so I know that it should be a U shape and then with this minimum point. Lah. Okay, if you want to make it more accurate, then we can try to find out uh, the Y intercept or the X intercept for this particular expression. So I'm having Y equals to X squared minus 3X. And then when I try to factorize it, I'm having X and then X minus 3. If I let Y equals to 0, then from here you can see very clearly that my X Intercept will be x equals to 0 and also x equals to 3. Okay, then if I try to compile everything together, right, I know that my point, my graph will pass through the 0, 0, and also the 0, 3, and it should be a U shape, okay, with the minimum value which is um, negative 9 over 4. So my U shape should be something like this. Um, I try to sketch it out. Lah. So you can basically try to imagine the graph in your mind before you want to decide the um range okay so by right this is my curve for parabola and then i'm having zero three which is my all these are the root okay or the x intercept and this particular value here will be actually negative nine over four so how i know is negative nine over four i get it from the completing square method right the form okay and then for this particular question they are saying that the domain that we consider is x can be any real number. That means we are taking the graph from negative infinity for x until positive infinity for x. We are taking this whole curve okay, for this particular function. And after that, if I want to know the range, so we are looking for the lowest point. So what's the lowest point for this curve? 
So the lowest value of y for this curve will be actually negative 9 over 4. And the graph keeps on going up, right? So the graph keeps on going up. Therefore, from here, we actually know that the range of the function should be y greater equals to 9 over or uh, negative 9 over 4. Okay, so this is actually the range and how I decide the range. Again, in my mind, I try to imagine the shape of the diagram according to the domain given in this function. All right? Yeah, so to me, I think um, for a level slivers, it is still uh, enough for us uh, to use the knowledge that we learned earlier using the transformation and also the basic shape for the graph, okay, to determine the range. All right, so this is what we have for example 14. And now let's have a look for example 15. Okay, so for example 15, again, I'm having the same function here, x squared minus 3x, if you try to compare it. And now they try to change the value of the domain given. So they say now, if the domain of the function is x smaller or equals to 3, then what is the range of f? All right, so again, to decide the new range here, we are having the same function for same, same expression for the f, right, for the function f, but we are now having different domain, okay? And if I try to have a look for the graph for the domain x smaller equals to 3, which means that this is my x smaller, uh, x equals to 3, right? And then they are considering the smaller graph. Smaller means that I'm going to consider this part as my graph. Okay, so the red color graph will be actually the um, the graph that we want to consider for this domain, which is x smaller equals to 3, right? Okay, and now for this particular graph, what is the range? Again, try to look for the minimum value or the lowest point for this particular curve. Again, it is still negative 9 over 4 and the graph will keep on going up. Therefore, the range for this curve is actually y greater equals to 9 over 4. Okay, then how about if they continue to change the domain again? Right, so for part number 2, now maybe they say that, oh, the domain now uh, is x greater than 5 and they want us to state the range of f. Okay, so what I want to do is maybe I try to recover back uh, the original graph. Okay, so let's say I'm having the original graph like this. You see that this is a nice U shape. Nah? Okay, our domain now will be x greater than 5. So that means if I try to draw a 5 here, then the curve that I want to consider is on the right hand side of 5. Okay, so right hand side of 5 means that I want to. I'll draw a white circle because there's no equal sign here, right? There's no equal sign here. And then right hand side of the 5 means I want to consider this part of the graph. Okay, so if I try to cancel off the part of the graph that I don't want, so this is the part of the graph that I want to consider, and the graph will keep on going up. Okay, so for the domain x greater than 5. To determine the range, I need to know what is this lowest point here. This is the lowest point, right? Okay, so I want to know what is the value for this particular point here. Okay, so to know this particular point, what is the value for the y, I need to substitute the value 5 into the function, where I should have 5 squared minus 3 times 5. And the value that I get is actually a 10. Okay, so... That means the value here will be a 10. And this particular line, y equals to 10, is actually the lowest point for the graph of this function with the domain x greater than 5. Okay, then the graph will keep on going up, right? So to determine the range here, basically you can see very clearly that the range of the function is more than 10. So you will write y greater than 10. So 10 is not included because of the domain given is x greater than 5, also not included the 5. Therefore, we will follow the sign for the domain where y should be greater than 10. Alright, so again, to determine the domain, right, or, or sorry, to determine the range, right, basically, I'm still trying to imagine the graph. 
okay, for any particular maybe quadratic curve curve, and then try to imagine in your mind, and then you can also visualize the graph, uh, okay, according to the different domain. Then from there you decide the range. Okay, so this is uh, some example uh, on how we actually determine the domain, uh, determine the range uh, for a certain type of question. All right, so let's have a look for the next example, which is example 16. Okay, so for those who understand what we discussed just now, right, for example 14 and 15, maybe you can pause this video for a while and then you can have a try for example 16 to check whether your steps and understanding is correct or not. Okay, so for example 16, we are having another quadratic curve, 2x squared minus 8x plus 11, <coughs> and then the domain is x can be any real number. So they want us to express the function into this pattern, which is a completed square form. Again, all right, so we will start the completing square form first. All right, so I try to factorize out the 2, and then I will have x squared minus 4x, and I want to have plus something square minus something square. Then close bracket. I only want to factorize out the 2 from the first two term and then the plus 11, the constant term, I will just keep it outside. So plus 11. Okay, so as a something that I should fill into the bracket here. Again, I'm taking negative 4 divided by 2 and I should have negative 2 here. Alright, and after that, I will try to compile the first three terms into one big bracket with a square outside. So what is inside the bracket, it should be the x and also negative 2. Then for this part, if I expand the square, I'm having negative 4, and then plus 11. Then I try to multiply in the 2 and also uh, the 2 into the, uh, to the bracket and also the constant term inside the bracket. Huh? Okay, so if I try to expand it, I will have 2 multiply with x minus 2 squared minus 8, then plus 11. And if I further simplify it, this is what I should have. Okay, so this is uh, basically the completed square formula for a quadratic expression. Right, and by having this completed square form, right, it is quite easy for us uh, to visualize the shape of the curve and also later it can help us to decide the range. Okay, so for part number two, they want us to state the range of function f. Okay, before we can find out the range, maybe we can try to imagine the diagram of this function, uh, the curve for this function from this computer square form. So I know that it should be a U shape because of 2 here, it is a positive value. And after that, I know the minimum point, the coordinate should be x equals to 2 and also x equals to 3. All right, and if I let x equals to 0, I will get the value y which is equals to 11. And this is my y-intercept. Okay, then now if I try to compile everything together and make it become a curve, huh, my curve should look something like this. It should be a U-shape. The minimum coordinate will be x equals to 2 and also x equals to 3. And then this particular value for y-intercept should be 11. It should look something like this. Okay, and then after I imagine the curve in my mind, and now I can decide what is my range. Okay, so again, before you decide the range, have a look for the domain again. So the domain here, even is x can be from negative infinity to positive infinity, which means that the graph will keep on going up. And now I'm looking for the lowest point for the graph. So the lowest point for the graph here, you can see that it's actually 3. Lah. And the graph keeps on going up, right? So the range for this particular function is greater or equals to 3. So I just need to write out straight away for the answer where... The, two, the range for the function should be y greater equals to 3. Alright, okay, so basically this is how we actually decide lah, okay, the value of range, especially for the quadratic curve. Okay, so usually what we do is that like we try to use the diagram or the curve to help us, okay, so that we know how to determine the range for this kind of question. Alright, okay, then for the next video, we will be discussing uh, also the, uh, the range uh, 
which is related to quadratic expression as well, but it becomes the reciprocal of the quadratic function. All right, so for that kind of question, how are we going to determine the range? Right, so we'll discuss it in the next video.